hello everyone we're just waiting a few more moments to see um get some other people in in the queue and i can see people are lining up and getting in there which is great and we're so happy you could join us this evening i'll give you a few seconds to get it going and then i'll do my introduction okay that seems to leveled off so welcome everyone thank you for joining us tonight we have a large group of people we're so pleased that everyone was so excited about this topic that they signed right up it's great to get this information out there from leading experts like don um i will do uh first uh, a, a little welcome to everyone plus tell you that we're going to be going through a presentation with our facilitator our expert don clark and i'll she'll introduce herself in a moment but if you have a question i can see some people have already used the question um, component in the side in your control panel. You can see you can ask questions there and I'll be monitoring the questions throughout the webinar and then we'll collect them for the end um, and we can put them to Dawn at the end of that. And then as well, um, there will be a moment in the chat where I can post some things and we have, actually some of you may see it now, but not to confuse you, there's a link there and that's for the last slide in the presentation. So I'll, I'll explain that when we get down further. So first off, welcome, welcome Don, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight. I, I wanted to do a little land recognition first off from the Canadian Child Care Federation because of course we're partnering with Active for Life in doing this webinar. We're very pleased to be partnering with them. So we respectfully acknowledge that the land on which the CCCF, which is the Canadian Child Care Federation, is located is the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. We recognize all Indigenous people who are here before us those who live with us now and the seven generations to come. As Indigenous people have done since time immemorial, we strive to be responsible stewards of the land and to respect the cultures, ceremonies and traditions of all who call it home. As we open our hearts and minds to the past, we commit ourselves to working in a spirit of truth and reconciliation to make a better future for all. Today, these lands continue to be shared territory and are occupied by many diverse peoples from near and far. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility and a relationship. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past and dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Dawn. Hello, Dawn, welcome. Well, hello, Robin. Thank you so much for having me and I'm so excited to be here tonight. Um, my name is Dawn Clark. I've been working in the field of early childhood education since 1973, so I'm dating myself here. Um, I'm now a professor emerita in the Department of Child and Youth Studies from Mount Royal University. So I'm continuing this because it is my passion. And so I thank you all for taking time out of your evening after I know how busy you've had either working with or on behalf of children and families. And so I hope that what we're able to do today, will just, I'll, I'll be able to share my passion and, and invite you to join my journey for active play. So this webinar is part of the official launch of a new online resource called activeplay.ca. And this, this resource is exclusively for early childhood educators created by Active for Life and funded by Canada's Early Learning and Child Care um, Innovation Program. And as we'll see tonight, Active Play supports ECEs with videos, posters, and other resources that are available in 10 different languages, English, French, five international languages, and three indigenous languages. And I'll show you those in a moment. We hope you'll join us on this journey to engage children in more active play. So let's get moving and I'll get my PowerPoint up here. And for some reason, Robin, all I can see is me. What do you see? I can see your lovely land recognition slide. All right, I wonder how I get to see that. We're all seeing that one. <laughs> all right, well, I can't see it. There we go, all right. Sorry about this, everybody. We've just been moving through this and trying to get it to work. So there we are. So we have a poll that we'd like to start with. We were interested in finding out why you might have chosen to come to this webinar. And we're gonna ask you to choose all that apply. So learning how active play can make your day better, making better use of your time outdoors, being more active indoors and encouraging children to be more active. So Robin, 
Yes, I've launched the poll and people are responding fast and furiously. It's wonderful. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yep. So just click in responses. I'll give it a few more minutes. Let everybody have a turn to get in there. Now then, of course, what I have to hope is what you want to learn is what we're going to be doing today. Okay, so I will now close the poll and I'll share the results. So that's interesting. All right, I can't see Robin, so perhaps you can oh, just- Oh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll read those to you. What's so interesting? <laughs> learning how active play can make my day better, 59%. Making better use of our time outdoors was 70%. Ah. Planning more active play indoors was 69%, okay. and encouraging children to be more active is 70%. So people haven't thought yet, I don't think, about how active play can be of benefit to them as, as the educators in the room. So we'll take a look at that. Very interesting, pretty balanced, 70 and 69% for the last yeah. three. That's very cool. Okay, thank you, everybody. All right, so here are our objectives. This is what we're looking to do. So we want to recognize, oh dear, I'm not seeing me again, or I'm only seeing me. Oh, we can see your objectives, it's great. Well, yeah, but I can't see them and I can't read them. No. Oh, okay. okay. So what do I need to do here? There we go, let's go here, thank you. I'm sorry about that, I'm just gonna stop touching my cursor. So the objectives are recognize that active play benefits educators as well as children. Value and use the resources provided on activeplay.ca and jeuactif.ca to engage children in active play. To understand that planning for active play can be simple and inexpensive. And we're hoping at the end that you're able to increase your competencies, your confidence and your motivation to engage children in active play. Now, if we only had 30 or 40 instead of what currently looks like 450, um, I would ask you to put your answers in the chat. Instead, I'm just going to ask you to think about this. Plug in the, this being the things that you see now in these photos of toddlers make your day better. So the toddler on the left has just discovered, if you look really closely at the photo, you'll see that he's got speckles of mud all the way to the top of his head. And this little one dressed in rain gear and rain boots just discovered this day that he could smash and jump in puddles in such a glorious way that he could spread the mud right to the top of his head. And he is so proud. You can just see the pride in his expression here in what he was able to do. And the two little ones in the middle They've been given sticks and permission to make noise. And look how they're enjoying making noise. The little girl, it's a full body exercise as she's got these sticks going and she's making noise along with her friend. And the toddler on the right, he's just poised. He's just getting ready to lift his hands up, put them in the air and cheer because he climbed onto the top of a stump all by himself. So if you look at these photos, you look at the body language, you look at the faces and the expression of joy and pride and accomplishment, and you're thinking, people, the educators who've allowed these photos to take place, one has allowed some messiness to happen, another has allowed some noise, and another has allowed a toddler to stretch and challenge his boundaries. And thinking about how these things can make your day better. Now we know that children learn through play. We all know that. We know that young children need and want to be physically active. We know that active play supports all areas of early development, that active play encourages everything to, to grow and to develop together from the brain to the body, to the emotions, to the social, everything's working together. That learning to love movement in the early years can lead to an active, healthy life. But more importantly, what's in it for you? Why would you do this? Now, it's wonderful to do it for children. But in 
2018 to 2020, my research team, the early years physical literacy, were asked by Active for Life and funded by the federal government to do a proof of concept study. It was a two-year project. It was a quasi-experimental study. And we were collecting final data in March of 2020. And if any of you were groaning at that date, you will recognize it as the date when childcare centers were closing all across Canada. So we moved to online data collection and our participants were fantastic. And we asked them in a series of surveys how they thought active play had benefited their children over the previous couple of years of participation in the study and how their practice in the playroom with children had changed as a result of participating. But they kept adding these other things and saying, yes, the children benefited. Yes, our practice has changed. But we found benefits as well from participating in this study. So if you look on the left, the, the middle brown box, one of the educators, and this is just one quote, there were several educators who said, you know, instead of saying don't, no, stop, can't, um, to those children in the photos that we saw above, I can now say, can you show me again how you did that? And when they stopped saying, no, don't stop, be careful, they found that their relationships with the children grew stronger. And one of the educators said, I'm a believer in the power of movement and playfulness. And we found that when children were active, when they had more time, more space, more opportunities to stretch and challenge their own boundaries, their needs were being better met. And when their needs were being met, their behavior was calmer and smoother. And when you're not spending your time dealing with tantrums or trying to teach children to share or getting them to apologize for behaviors, if you're just playing and having fun with children, your day becomes much better too. And I love this last quote. I enjoy participating because it gave me my moments of imagination, creativity, thought processing and release of energy. Everything that we talk about that are benefits for children, the educators came back to us and said they were benefits for us. This has made our day with children so much fun, so much better. I love coming to work now. So I want to play you a sneak peek of one of the videos that's on the Active Play website. <clears throat> this particular video was filmed in Edmonton, half a block away from a childcare center. And every day, the educators pack up the necessary backpack, trundle the kids a half block past an office tower in a parking lot to a small green area. It's available in most municipalities across Canada within walking distance of childcare. I want you to watch the play that happens here. This is only a minute long, how the educators are engaging with the children. And I want you to watch body language and facial expressions in an experience where there's been no planning, no equipment has been laid out. They're just enjoying the green. <laughs> that video. Um, we didn't script it. We didn't ask the educators to do anything specifically. We just asked them to play. And you saw examples of at least three of the risky play categories. Going faster, both running and rolling, going higher, jumping off the boulder and off the retaining wall, and getting lost. 
I don't know if you noticed in there, one of the little girls was sneaking into the forest and the educator was sneaking around on the other side, but from her perspective, that little tiny woods, she was getting lost. Um, it, it just perfect examples of the benefits of active play for everyone. Now we're gonna see if I can switch here to the screen. Maybe not. There we go. All right. So I would like you to I would like to welcome you to activeplay.ca. This is the website we're going to take a look at over the next half hour or so. I want you to notice first that there are um, four buttons across the to top, home, videos, posters, and articles. And if you look over here to the left, um, the entire website can be translated or can be, well, is in French. So if you are bilingual, if you're working in a French community, a Francophone community, the entire website is available for you in French. So let's take a look at what this offers. It's early childhood education resources to get children engaged in physically active play. We're gonna watch this at the end because it's a summary video, but I want you to notice that there's ways to share. Everything on this resource can be shared with others, colleagues, parents, students in early learning programs if you do that. You can also join us and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We encourage you to sign up for our email and I'll mention, or for our newsletter. I'll mention this again. We've written 18 newsletters, one of which will drop into your mailbox every month. It will provide links to a video, to a poster, to an article, and provide all kinds of ideas about how you might use those resources in your own playrooms, how you might implement this in active play. This website was designed primarily as a basic resource for those just starting their active play journey. But I'm gonna show you when you get to the videos, how the videos in particular can be useful even for those who are more experienced. But I want to start first with the posters and take a look at that. One of the things that we're most excited about with this particular website is that not only is the website in English and French, but the videos and the posters have been translated to eight additional languages. Five of them are international, in Arabic, Farsi, Simplified Chinese, Tagalog, and Urdu. And that's a recognition, as, as Robin read in the land recognition, that our country is becoming increasing, increasingly diverse. And all of us will have um, families who come from many different places around the world where English is definitely not their first and may not even be their fourth language in many cases. So working with families and being able to communicate with them in their first language may be a, a support to you. We also know that many newcomers to Canada are finding positions as educators in childcare. And while their English is good enough to get them through their college programs, often having something in their own language just adds a depth to the understanding that they may experience. And we also wanted to acknowledge, and it's timely given that last week was the week for truth and reconciliation and Saturday was Orange Shirt Day. We have translated all the posters and the videos into Inuktitut, Ojibwe, and Plains Cree. And those three indigenous languages were chosen based on the number of speakers of each of the languages and how, how much land mass across Canada they cover. So let's take a look at the posters. We have six posters that are available for you. All of these posters can be downloaded. You'll notice that there's a minimum of text on each of the posters so that they're easy to read. And it also, of course, made it easy to translate. Um, there's very few colors and simple images so that it's not costly when you're running it through your printer. If you want to post these, send them home with parents. 
So the first one is, is why active play in the early years? And it's just the connection between gross motor skills and brain development, which in the first five years of a child's life, we know is the prime period for building healthy, well-developed brains. And active play, gross motor development helps that. Interesting tip at the bottom there, that children with strong motor development do better in school. And the benefits of outdoor play. When children play outdoors, we know all of these things that happen for them, that there's more vigorous play, better social skills, they're engaged in more cooperation, more cooperative skills, and they become problem solvers. And when those things happen, along with better language development as they're negotiating their cooperation and their social skills and their problem solving, that there's fewer emotional difficulties. And when there are fewer difficulties emotionally, there's better behavior and improved self-regulation. That was the thing that our educators in the study picked up. When there's improved self-regulation, many of the issues that we deal with in the playroom go away. And there was increased happiness. You can see that there's download under each of these, should you wish to do that. Now, how to dress for outdoor play. We've just talked about the benefits of outdoor play, but we know that ensuring that children are prepared to go out, whether it's rainy, whether it's extremely warm, whether it's snowy, is often one of the biggest challenges that holds us back from addressing the regulations of being outside for a certain amount, an hour or two hours a day. And so this poster is, again, very simple, very little text, mostly images. It's translated into those five international and three indigenous languages. Um, and it's just saying that in Canada, wherever you've come from, whether your seasons were similar, your days, your months were all similar temperatures in Canada, they're not. And the secret to addressing Canadian weather is to dress in layers because wait 15 minutes and the weather will have changed. The poster beside is one of my favorite ones, active play and indi indigenous traditions. So for Indigenous peoples across Canada, play has always been important. And you'll see across the top the things that they're looking for to develop survival skills through games, to teach a connection to the land. And that's something that all of our children better need, is more connection to the land as we deal with increasing screen time and climate change. That their games foster relationships, that they build strength, and flexibility. But it's the ones at the bottom. In early years, we can in, re reflect on this idea of children's holistic development, that through active play, particularly outdoors, building connection to the land, develop strong hearts, healthy bodies, and wise spirits. Now, as with everything, we have the ABCs. Active play started out as physical literacy. We start to, started to use the word active play because often physical literacy was confusing. People thought we were talking about reading and writing. But as with reading and writing, physical literacy has ABCs, basic fundamental movement skills, balancing, running, and agility, and moving, object manipulation, moving, hands and feet, throwing, kicking, catching, all of those things. Not only are those things important for children to be able to take part in physical activity and sport for the rest of their lives, but they're also really useful when we look at various careers and activities that we do. So for example, carpenters balance on, on beams and they swing hammers, object manipulation and balance. Firefighters climb ladders and pull hoses. There's strength and flexibility for you. Nurses lift and move patients. Everybody needs to carry groceries. But this one's so important in Canadian winters. Walking on icy sidewalks takes balance. Now the sixth one, sixth poster, is less of an issue as most, most childcare centers and programs have policies around screen time for children and also for the educators. But for families, this is a huge issue. After the pandemic, as we saw active play and especially time outdoors plummet, 
screen time increased dramatically. And while too much isn't healthy, there are some solutions that families can choose. So from examples here, there's read the reviews of what the children want to play, watch the shows and play the video games with your children, limit your own screen time. Don't let your children constantly have your phone at the side and always be checking when they're trying to tell you about your day. Look at turning screens off in the house at a set time every day. Have screen-free um, zones like bedtime, mealtime, or when you're going to have family activity time. And to the best of your ability, and I know it's tough at the end of a, a long day, for parents not to use screens to distract or to act as babysitters, try to avoid using that as much as possible. So those are our six active play posters. Now, along with those posters, there are four articles. The articles are only in English and French because they were too text heavy. Um, but again, they provide some background. So for example, if you wanted to show the poster on why children need active play, and a parent comes to you and say, I don't understand that. I think, in these, I think my child's getting ready for kindergarten. I need you to teach him how to hold his pencil and cut. And then you can provide the article that goes along with the poster and provides a little bit of research background. Here we're connecting again, the big reason being brain development and school readiness. So while parents may think school readiness consists of printing and cutting, this article gives some background about how gross motor development is important for school readiness. And then it goes on to talk about how does this work. And we can look at all of the articles here. The four articles that we have are the Y active play, the physical literacy, so the basic fundamental movement skills, because often when people see that connected to their everyday activities, they're more inclined to think about that and, and the benefits of that for their children. There's a wonderful article on the indigenous views of active play. And the fourth one is on the benefits of outdoor play. So as you're trying to persuade your parents to make sure that the children have what they need to go outside, regardless of the weather, you may find that you want to send home the article to give them just a little bit more push into why that's important. So now I want to take you to my favorite link, the videos. So I had the incredible joy of traveling to nine locations across Canada to film the 13 videos that we have available for you here. Uh, I was able to connect with colleagues that I've known for years. I made new colleagues. Uh, we filmed in family-based programs early on, for example, in Ontario, play school, childcare centers, and JK kindergarten programs in provinces and territories that have JK in kindergarten. We didn't give the educators any scripts. We just said, we negotiated the day that would work for them. They dealt with the consents with parents and arranging for extra educators to be in for those, those children who weren't consent, consented. So they still had fabulous days away from where we were filming. Um, and we just asked them to engage in their favorite activities. And I think that's why you see such natural behavior in the videos and such joy, persistence, and determination. We filmed a range of indoor and outdoor settings, structured and unstructured play. We were highlighting in every video how active play can be simple, inexpensive, and fun. So I wanted, before I show you any of the videos, I'd like to go down to the bottom of the page to the tab that kind of hides down the bottom here. About. And I want to acknowledge the nine sites who agreed to be filmed. Centre en Iva in Pancour, Ontario. Early on Dixie Bloor Neighborhood Centre in Mississauga. Early on Forest Program in Wheatley. This was so fun. I got to spend last year with the Early Learning and Child Care Program in Aurora College. And I visited the first year Early Learning students four different times during the year. And then when it was time for us to film, we relied on these students to engage the sites for us 
and to provide all of the active play that you'll see in the two videos that we filmed in Yellowknife. So if we wanted to say providing active play is easy, anyone can do it, students in their first year of the early learning program, their fourth month, we went up in January because we wanted to film real winter play. So we visited, we filmed in January. In their fourth month, they were providing film worthy op opportunities for us. We went to the Growing Together Family Resource Center in Chatham, Mildred Hall School for their junior kindergarten and kindergarten children, Revelstoke Child Care Society, two centers, Stepping Stones and Cornerstones, Windermere Early Learning Center in Alberta, and the Yellowknife Play, Play School Society for their two and three-year-olds. So now let's take a look at what we have for the videos. So we're going to start by thinking about, uh, we've got adventurous play here. We use the term adventurous rather than risky, as I think I mentioned earlier. Risky play is just a little bit off-putting for some people. Adventurous play is still the same thing. Children being adventurous, reaching out, testing their boundaries, going faster, going higher, spinning, getting lost, all of those fun things that we can do. And so we go from adventurous play, we go to some structured play, such as an indoor obstacle course, to unstructured play, such as loose parts and the mud kitchen. You've just seen the nature play. We went to a variety of different playgrounds. So in Yellowknife particularly, um, the playgrounds were more traditional with uh, the typical fixed play structure, swings and slides and so on. This particular playground, the pop-up or loose parts playground in Edmonton is a large flat surface covered either with AstroTurf or safe fall rubber. But the fun thing about that playground is that at the end of the playground are two huge storage sheds full of loose parts. And every time the children go out to the playground, they and their educators open those sheds and pull out what they want to play with that day and create a brand new environment every time they go out into the playground. And, and even better than that, there are all the seasonal adaptations in that playground because they're not restricted by fixed play structures that are closed for six or seven or eight months of the year because the safe fall surface is frozen. So instead in the spring, they plant gardens, flower gardens, vegetable gardens, they tend and nurture them during the summer. And in the fall, they harvest and eat their produce. In the summer, the playground turns into a splash park with hoses and sprinklers and, and buckets to carry water and to get wet in the hot days in the summer. In the fall, that's the playground that goes over to the nature play area in the urban spaces, the first video that we watched. And they collect leaves, bags and bags of leaves and the twigs that have fallen and some rocks and things and bring them back to the playground. And I don't think there's anything more exciting my childhood memories are certainly this way, of piling up leaves, getting buried in the leaves, jumping in the leaves, crunching through the leaves. And then in the winter, with so much snow in Edmonton, they don't shovel the playground off, they keep the snow and in fact, they bring more in and they can build forts with the, with the snow. Um, they clear off an area, make it flat. They don't go down to the safe fall. They, they flatten it out so it becomes sort of slippery snow. And they play ball hockey in their boots. And I even saw a photo of two little children sitting on little chairs. And they were ice fishing. So in front of them was a mound with a hole in it. And they were each holding those fishing rods that have little magnets on the end. And they were fishing magnetic fish out of the hole in the snow. The other playgrounds that we have are the, um, I'm sorry, I'll go back up, are the natural playgrounds from Revelstoke. Both of their, their sites have incredibly beautiful natural playgrounds. So Loose Parts is one example filmed there. The Mud Kitchen is another one filmed there, as is the Adventurous Play, and we, we will watch that. So we'll, we'll see that in a bit. Um, fundamental movement skills. So we have five different videos that look at fundamental movement skills. We went to the early on center in Pancour a 
a francophone program for infants. This little guy is three months old. So they started right with the three month old, how to engage the child in being more comfortable spending time on their tummy. Those of you who work with or have had little infants, tummy time's hard work. And a lot of infants are not as comfortable doing it, but isn't that a glorious picture of the little fellow looking at himself in the mirror? And just this look of, ah, who's that in the mirror? And all of a sudden, everything is bodies wriggling and moving as he's adjusting to that. To children up to, to infants up to nine months old who were crawling, except for one little one who would sit on her bottom and she'd use one leg to pull herself across the rug and she'd bounce on her bottom. And again, she sat in front of a mirror for the longest time and just bounced and watched herself bouncing in front of the mirror to an, a situation helping one of the children who's ready to start climbing over the soft foam structures that you can see in front of this situation. So the first fundamental movement skill is, is what do you do with, with infants? And it might be that you've got young infants in your program, or you've got a new mom in your program who's got an older sibling in your program, and you want to share with her some of the things that she might be able to do at home. Balance, of course, is probably the first fundamental movement skill that all infants work on. But as we learn with learning to keep safe on icy sidewalks is something that we need to consider all our lives. It's how we're able to ride a bike, to ski, to skate. Um, we spend a lot of time maintaining our core strength and our balance, even as adults. And so this is a video showing how some, that crucial fundamental movement skill can be supported indoors, primarily with infants and toddlers. We have locomotion and agility. So the next three are little snippets from all of the nine programs that we visited. Locomotion and agility, how do we support that? And the benefits of providing opportunities for children to vigorously run, jump, and climb for a good portion of their day when they're young in supporting self-regulation when you need to move back into small places children coming back into the playroom after a vigorous play outdoors are calmer, more willing to sit and do table activities or sit on the carpet and listen to a story. We're going to watch this object manipulation. So I'll just mention one other fundamental movement skill, ball play, which a lot of educators don't see happening within the context of indoor play. So let's take a look. Um, I want to start with this winter play video. So again, this was in um, this was in Yellowknife, January, minus 25. We filmed in the preschool first with the two and three year olds one day, then we had to wait and go to the JK kindergarten program the next day because Yellowknife is experiencing two and a half hours or three hours of sunlight each day. I want you to notice how this, the early learning students engage the children in both.
such a, a joyful experience of being outside. The other one I will mention that was indoors is that the early learning students um, worked with the JK kindergarten children to introduce some Northern Indigenous games. Um, so that's a fabulous video to watch. We have in the newsletter that features the Northern Indigenous games, one of our early childhood consultants provided some ways of adapting the games for younger children. These are four and five year olds. So for example, there was a leg wrestle shown here and her adaptation for infant toddlers was to have the children lie side by side, take their inside legs and, and put them together with a scarf and just have the children learn to work cooperatively to lift and lower their legs. So lots of things to think about. So indoors, as I say, structured and unstructured, this obstacle course, we're not going to have a chance to show you, but I just wanted to think about the activating of literacy and how that's something that's built into every aspect of our day. We read stories, we tell stories, we co-construct stories together. And probably most of you have now found books that engage children that allow them to stand up and dance or twirl or pretend they're an animal. Eric Carle is great for that. Uh, we used polar bear, polar bear, what do you hear when we were up north? Eric Carle's Head and Toe, or if you read Sandra Boynton's book, Barnyard Dance, Moo 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 and La La La. These children, these are four and five year olds. They created, co-created a story with their educators. And then with their educators created an obstacle course that talked about the journey because many children's stories have a journey in them. So Eric Carl's The Very Hungry Caterpillar, his journey, taking a bite out of this leaf, out of this la apple and so on. And the literacy that that teaches, that stories have beginning, middle and ends and that you can take a different perspective from the pictures that are in the book and transfer them into something that you can actually move through. And of course, going on a bear hunt is a perfect example of how to do that. So that's another way of incorporating active play into literacy as part of every day. But I wanted to go back to the fundamental movement skills here. And I want to show us the object manipulation. So this again is a series of snippets from different sites. So we've got some family-based programs, we've got childcare, and we've got um, a little bit of the natural playgrounds. But it's the idea that you can throw, catch, roll, strike, and kick indoors. <laughs> there were already a number of things that you have in your program. You don't need to be providing some of the more expensive equipment that you saw in the one early on program there. But they're very simple things, inexpensive things that you can provide. So one more video before we shift on to something else. I have to show you the adventure play, adventurous play. This one is the nature playground, although inside they start in, a, in an area called Leapland which is in the local school and community hub. Um, but the rest of it you will find is all outside. And I want you to look at the role that the educators are playing in adventurous play. <laughs>
finish up here, getting the most from the website resources. We know that an online resource like this is fantastic. You get excited when you see all of it, but everybody's busy. Everybody has other areas of focus and people forget. So how can you take the website apart? So that's the first thing we said, we thought was to make sure that we had the newsletters. Make sure we have the newsletters that will remind people once a month and give you extra ideas. We've asked you to follow us on Facebook and LinkedIn. But on the other end, using the website, pull a video, pull a poster. <coughs> Excuse me. And use it at staff meetings to lead discussions around things. As you're getting close to winter, how can you make the most of winter? Get the winter posters out, the benefits, the dressing, and the, the video. If your staff is too large and you don't bring all the staff together, consider, and you're a pedagogical lead, for example, consider using the resources in one-on-one -on -one conversations or when you go into a playroom. Include it for new staff orientation. For your families, include the posters and maybe one of the articles in the parent handbook. Put the poster up on a parent board and don't just put the poster because I know parents just walk by the poster. Put the poster up and then the photo of photos of all the children doing all of these things. So it's an active play poster, all the active play stuff, the winter benefits of outdoor play, all the things they're doing outside, the winter poster, everything they're doing outside. Make it personal so that the families stop and look and include everything in the newsletters. All of this can be shared. And for early learning students, readings and class discussions. So one final video. This is the Why Active Play video. And it, please watch, there's little snippets from all nine of the centers that we visit. As educators and caregivers, we want to provide children with the best start in life. Unfortunately, many children today are missing out on an essential part of childhood. With busy family schedules, distractions from technology, and more sedentary lifestyles, many children are not getting enough physical activity. This is where active play comes in. In keeping with natural childhood development, active play is crucial to healthy growth and learning. When children are engaged in playful physical activity, their brains start forming new connections, and with continued play, those connections grow stronger. This is the foundation for healthy cognitive, emotional, social, and physical development. That's why activeplay.ca was created. By promoting active play in childcare and early years centers, we can ensure that children have the opportunity for healthy development. Research has already shown that adding active play to daily schedules in childcare and early years centers can result in happier and better behaved children, as well as improved relationships between children and educators. Every child benefits from the magic of play. Let's support our children's growth and development by promoting active play in childcare and early years centers. Activeplay.ca is here to help you make it happen. Let's bring the magic of active play back into early childhood. And with that, we're going to do, I will say thank you. I'm going to stop sharing here after reminding you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram and to subscribe to the Active Play newsletter. And I'm going to move back to Robin, who's going to, we're going to put a word cloud together, hopefully, and okay. then answer some questions. So thank you for listening. Great. Okay, so we're going to try this word cloud exercise. Um, if you look in your chat, in the chat box, there's a little arrow. If you click on that, it'll show the chat. There's actually a, a website address that has a word cloud address. So if you clicked on that, it'll take you to a place that you have an opportunity to write in um, your word for the word cloud. So if you'd like to take a moment and test that out now, and while people are doing that, I can look through the questions and see if there's anything I can throw over to you, Don. Um, okay. Okay, so here's one here. Um, someone is saying, most parents just value learning ABC numbers, writing, reading, etc. 
everyone wants their children to be kindergarten ready, it's great to actually share with them the importance of learning through play. So sorry, that wasn't really a question, but a comment. Yeah, which is, yeah. yeah. And I think we also found when we spoke to parents in our study, the parents talked about how the children seemed more calm, more relaxed, transition into the childcare in the morning was easier, and the children slept and they ate better. So the parents started to see benefits for themselves at home. So once you get into it, it'll actually happen. <laughs> oh, for sure. And I know certainly when I was looking through your slides and listening to you and, and also with our other chats, I was really, really impressed to find out details about how, you know, benefits of active play, which we often don't think about, are things like just increased happiness. I mean, that's a wonderful thing. You know, people don't really give that enough credit. And and then the whole idea of how it impacts on self-regulation with children, which is a big part of a lot of our days are spent, as we know, as early childhood educators, monitoring behavior and trying to guide behavior. And it's so nice if we can get involved in more active play, that some of the self-regulation will just happen naturally, which is a really exactly. nice thing. Exactly. Yeah, and what I loved is that this website offers an opportunity for such great information sharing. The the visuals and the downloadables and the multi-language, I mean, that's just an amazing resource that our sector really could use and certainly use it to, you know, put up posters in your center, use it to start those conversations like you mentioned with parents when you have sort of a challenging conversation perhaps or if a parent's mm -hmm. asking why, you know, you're outside all the time, why aren't you sitting inside doing you know, more school ready kind of activities in their minds, you can explain to them and show them, you know, and use these articles as a place as a jumping off start to have those conversations and, exactly. and inform them in a really respectful way about what you're doing and why you're doing it and, and how it's so important to kids. And, and a really important part is, is getting active yourselves. I mean, as educators, you know, we need to get out there as educators and do them with the kids. I love seeing that in one of the videos, seeing the educator do the hopscotch. Well, of yeah. course, you know, kids don't know how to do hopscotch until you show them how Not to do anymore. hopscotch. So, <laughs> you know, you got to show them these things and, and do the tug of war. And, and I mean, as educators, we'll feel better ourselves and get more energy if we're out there engaged in active play as well. And and the face of the educator on the end of the tug of war when she felt back, just this open joy on her face as well. And that's the idea. And yeah. it's just as much fun for us as it is for the children. Oh yeah, my dream would be never to see, never to go past a yard where there's children playing it and seeing educators just standing. I oh, I don't want to see that anymore. I want to see people running and <laughs> engaged and active and helping children along. And it's just, it's such a great time to engage with kids too. And at exactly. a place where everyone can just be out of joy and be happy. And it doesn't have to be overly organized. You know, we just pick up and go where we're at. And, and the website offers lots of great resources and tips and strategies. So I'm really hoping that people will be able to take away um, some tips and tricks that they can use already uh, tomorrow and improve their practice because this is stuff we you can do right away, right? So are Perfect. we seeing anything on the on the word cloud? I'm gonna go over and see if I can figure that out. Hang on one second. <laughs> and what because I'll do is I'll share it. Oh yes, it is. It's working. So what I'll oh. do is unfortunately I think the people who are participating can see it. But what I will do too is I'll include it with the follow up email so everyone will get it. Okay. So I'll All I'll right. put a nice copy of that in there just so people can see. So basically we were asking what people's takeaways were from from the webinar and, and what they learned. So I'll share that with you for sure, Don, and I'll share it with everybody in the follow up email because it's a nice thing to see. Can I can you just give me the top three or four words, the biggest words on the word cloud? Can you see them? Sure. I think I can see them. Hang on one sec, be patient with there we go. Um let me see. What did I see? Um, that enriching that I benefit to. Um, learning strategies. Outdoor play is great. Education. Yeah. So yeah, there's nice the words popping up there. So and if you oh, know if people, if you um, are unable to go to that site or if you found that a bit intimidating to have to click on too many things, feel free to write them in the. Um, in the questions um Please. you can just yeah. write them in the question bar and, and and i can i can fill them in for you if, if if it's uh if it's not working for you so feel free to do that as well and i'll try and capture some of those thoughts there too because that um, will really help us too when we're looking at what can we do to improve the website to improve the webinars that we deliver on the website so your feedback is is really important for us for sure. So, and we'll also have an opportunity to have a, um, yeah, I see the word class being complicated for some people. So don't worry about it. Don't be stressed about it. It's the thing. We'll, we'll let it go. We'll let the cloud go into the, into the air. And what we can do is um, I can add another, um, perhaps another opportunity to do that within the follow-up email. And that'll be nice to get our reflections back and people can take their time and, and do it properly because I know it's a bit, we didn't, I didn't, that's, that's my bad. I didn't set it up properly. Um, 
But we were, uh, we were trying to you, experiment in play. Well, that's how you learn, right? <laughs> yeah. um, learning through play, so to speak, because we're learning exactly. as we go. But um, <laughs> the other thing too that will be in the, it'll be a brief email that I send out as a follow-up. There'll be resources in there. There'll be the slides, you know, that type of thing, all the links that you need. Um, as well, there'll be an opportunity to do a, a short little evaluation that really will help both Don's organization and, and the Canadian Child Care Federation as well um, for future webinars. So please take the, the few moments to do that. And a lot of people are asking about certificates. Yes, I know. Um, so the certificates <laughs> will be sent out, but they'll be sent out in a separate email. So you're gonna get two emails following, within probably 48 hours of this live event, you'll have two emails. One will be from me and it will just have the resources like I mentioned and just a general um, conclusion. And then the other email will come from Certifier. It's an app that we use and we have to input the information in there and then they automatically generate that out for everyone who attended the live webinar. So even after you get your uh, slides that you can show or, or your follow-up email, note that you have to attend the live webinar in order to receive the professional development certificate. So that's just so, so we're clear on that one. Um, I'll just see if there's any other questions. Just uh, people are saying thank you so much and how much oh. they enjoyed it. Um, and there's a, I think out of everybody, we only had about three with some technical issues. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good as far as that goes, I know. And I know there's some, someone commented on the sound, but all those videos, um, they are available on the website too. So you guys can click on those and you can watch them on the website at your own, at your own leisure. Yeah, lots of thank yous, wonderful. So great. So that was a, a really great opportunity to chat about something so important. And thank you, Don, for your expertise and sharing that with us. We really appreciate that. Well, thank you so much, Robin. Everybody take care. Have a great week and, and play tomorrow. Come and play. <laughs> Long time to play. <laughs> Have a wonderful evening. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, everyone.